Damn, I just missed that vehicle right there. That vehicle um was bright in their lights, and then when I put them on, try to put them on camera, um they hurried up and made a turn with. And you ran. They ran the stop sign right here, and just made a turn. And you know, didn't even use their signals. So if you run a stop sign, and you brighten your lights, and you didn't even use your signals when turning left. But what happened was my phone, I was trying to turn the camera on to, towards me so y'all can see what he did. Or Yeah, I know that was a guy. That wasn't a woman. So, um, it's like, I'm rude. But, but yeah, I was in a little quick emergency in real life. Right there. Uh, so it's uh, Sunday, November twenty second, two thousand twenty. I think it's the anniversary of JFK, not his birthday, but I think his ritual sacrifice. Um, I think I remember. It was like. I think it was uh, November 22nd, 1963. I could be wrong. So, yeah, today is Sunday, November 22nd, 2020. It's also the anniversary. Yeah, I'm going to talk about it. We were still 14 years old. But um, the anniversary of when Stank Horlanika, you know, hiked up the sexual situation and she did it more than once. Um, but it's the anniversary when she hiked up the sexual situation, you know, years ago, and I got scapegoated for it. And it's November, November 22nd, 1997. But that was on a Saturday. So she probably, you know, being a witch or an occultist or whatever, deliberately planned you know, that ritual date, 11 22, 1997, and then it was on a Saturday, and then the exact next week, the foster grandma, Mildred Collins, was pronounced dead, you know, but they, I heard that she supposedly, the foster grandma, Mildred Collins, you know, they said the Collins' last name is an Illuminati last name, and that all the Collins are related, black or white. <clears throat> you know, so, um, so yeah, I'm, I don't know. It's like thinking about, you know, the anniversary of Lanika doing that made me feel the same kind of down and upset or whatever, <clears throat> you know, uh, same kind of feeling as if, um, you, you know, am I targeting, I, after this situation of this date, you know, was when my targeting, you know, started to manifest, I guess. So, make me feel like, you know, the same kind of way as when you feel upset and down of an anniversary of a day you got raped or something. Or the, feeling like down of an anniversary of the day you went to jail or, or something bad, something else bad happened. Or the day you lost a loved one. Well, you know, as I said, it took for this situation for people to decide they want to, you know, start calling me crazy. And then, I guess, when I didn't realize what was going on, I was on those psych medications, and I blacked out and punched her at that track meet on, it was Friday, February 20th, 1998. Exact year, I didn't even pre-plan it, but it was an exact year after that girl, Kiva, who was Lanika's friend, got beat in the face with a lock, and her entire face was bloody. Kiva, her name was Kiva Tipado. Who, when we were in eighth grade and Kiva got beat in the face with a lock and I only saw the aftermath and was traumatized because I never really saw that before like and then they say that Kiva and the other girl were fighting over a boy and the other girl 
Like, I saw three girls, um, you know, get taken to the office. And the, the girl who bragged about beating Kiva with a lock, like, she was taken, like, the teachers took, held their arm and took them to the office. And, you know, Kiva's face was all bloody. And then, um, the light-skinned girl, Ebony, had, like, no expression on her face. And then they had this dark-skinned girl. I don't think not think I remember her name. Could be, because if not Katrina, then I don't remember. But that girl, um, she had a real, real, real mad face. So, and then Ebony, sick ass, you know, when she got out of jail, she she bragged about um, made it, making it like as if it was worth it to pay $500, you know, worth it to, you know, beat Kiva with a lock. But if Lanika was uh, Kiva's so-called best friend, or not best friend, but very close, one of her close friends, and I heard, like, I, I was close. My classroom was like, I think there was a set of bathrooms in between. And, like, Lanika was bragging and laughing about the situation. And I heard she was bragging and laughing during the situation. And afterwards, like, everybody else was traumatized. You know, I was traumatized for years with that Kiva situation. You know, and also traumatized in 2015 when I saw that beating in Los Angeles. The 12 men beat the one female. I was so traumatized, I got on my knees and cried and prayed and was shaking and stuff like that. You know, I really hate to see people be beaten so badly, you, you know, and then people are so cutthroat and soulless that the kids, you know, kids being cruel enough with Kiva, you know, and even adults are sadistic and cruel that they endorse and glorify this shit. You, you know, they endorse and glorify the near murder of another black human being. And they're the first ones who want to cry black on um, black crime or black lives matter. You know, um, <clears throat> but, you know, Lanika, I'm just saying, she Kiva's supposed to be one of her best friends, but, you know, she was sadistic and cruel enough that she sat there and freaking laughed rather than any other good friend would have jumped in and helped Kiva, even though Kiva used to bully her ass and laugh at me too, but I'm just saying, you know. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, I know we were still underage, but, you know, some we were in junior high, and, you know, even in elementary school, I guess from... As like even a seven year old child still has the innocence, but eight year old child, you still don't know what you're really doing. But I know from last, I mean earlier this year, the roommate Janet, her eight year old son, he thought he was grown as hell. So so I guess I mean they have some kids, you know they're babies, like, and I guess if, if, if they're taught how to act like they think they're grown, and they're underage, you know. I was still seeing child like people still call me child like or they want to say it in a degrading way and say childish you know um so yeah I'm gonna okay y'all some perks so So yeah, they want to distract me. Um, they didn't have to turn this way. They didn't need to. But anyway, um, so like you see, my eyes look kind of Asian, Asian slanted, cause somehow I look when I first wake up. But I didn't just first wake up because. Uh, I guess the hood on my head make my eyes look more like I first woke up, but I took the hood off, and they still look, hmm, y'all. So, um, I couldn't go back to sleep after, like, 4 o'clock in the morning, but I think my sleep that I got, it was spotty. And I'll say I think I got a maximum of four hours of sleep, probably less than that. Um, but cannot achieve or maintain, I mean, obtain that eight hours. 
and my chest is still, my heart is still feeling heavy. And um, and my heart is feeling heavy. So forgive me, um, you know, for feeling lack of oxygen to my heart. And so um, they kept force urinating me last night. And, um, you know, when I try to get better sleep, that's how it is. They end up waking me up. And then it's like sometimes I have so much extra fluid retention from the sleep deprivation. I can feel as I'm peeing, you know, pee a whole lot, like piss like a horse. And it's like I can feel liquid being removed from my heart as I'm peeing, as I'm urinating, you know. So right now my heart and my chest feel so heavy and like as if, I feel like as if I've just been running a marathon or just running a lot. And I'm feeling, that's why I seem, seem kind of out of breath. You know, um, earlier I thought that I wasn't even going to do any YouTube videos earlier in the day. Well, I have a, few, a couple of videos from last night saved. <clears throat> but I wasn't going to try to do any videos this morning because um, on Sunday, well, the Scambia County um, offices... I don't know, their internet has been acting, fu their Wi-Fi has been acting funny, <clears throat> and so has the Wi-Fi by, right by my sleep spot. I can't even access it anymore. But there's a new place that I can access Wi-Fi, <clears throat> but it only works at certain times of the morning or certain times of the day. And it seems like it'll work early in the morning on sun. I mean, on uh, weekdays, but I tried last Sunday, and, and it wouldn't even come up. It only comes up at certain times, um, like this new kind of why I, I mean, I probably, they probably had it all, no, because um, I couldn't access it before. I think it's kind of new. But they have a few other places. I wonder if that might be why there's all this construction for um, all that somewhat um, faster Wi-Fi. But I'm trying to still be frugal with my data, my phone data, because, let's see, I probably got 10 days left. And the fact that it's going to be Thanksgiving, and I'm not going to know where I'm going to be at, and for me to be vulnerable and on the streets with nowhere to go, it might be easier for people to harass me. Or, and, you know, they probably might ramp up the targeting because it's the holidays, you know, how that is. And I couldn't sit in Waffle House all day. You know, I have to just eat my food and then leave and go. And they would tell me I have only 30 minutes to sit, sit down and eat my food. When other customers, oh, because you're homeless. But other customers, you know, can stay and chit-chat for as long as they want. You know, um... Or if I go on a holiday, you know, to the Badlands place, I get ran out of there for trying to simply, before I can even ask for some water. And I'm banned from just about every Circle K because of perping. Um, you know, I got kicked out of seemingly every freaking Circle K. And um, for me to not go and sit in there, there's no place to sit, but for me to just go in there and buy something in the convenience store, you know, um, so forgive me for being slow because of my sleep deprivation, so I'm still slowed, um, and, um, today, you know, per whether you announce it or not, the perps are going to you know, try to infiltrate and sabotage what your plan is, you know, um, trying to infiltrate, infil, infiltrate, like the biological mom, Frances, when she used to be alive, she used to say infiltrate. See, they infiltrate, you heard me. She used to be like that. See, they infiltrate, you heard me, but it's infiltrate, you know, infiltrate, um, you know. 
infiltrate or sabotage, you know, what you're trying to do. So, um, I'm just like so out of breath. And I feel, oh man, it's feel like, you know how people say, it feels like the wind is knocked out of me. <clears throat> you know, um, so if I'm feeling slowed and incoherent, it's because of my sleep deprivation. So even if I had notes written down, you know, I still would probably appear to be all over the place. But I guess that's the way the perps want, you know, for you to appear mentally ill because you haven't had sleep. But if there's a way to remedy the sleep deprivation, you know, um, I wouldn't have to appear, quote unquote, appear mentally ill. But, you know, I guess when they have their confirmation that they know I'm sleep deprived, that's when they incre they ramp up and increase their in-person targeting and gang stalking and harassment and street theater skits. <clears throat> and then um, they also increase the electronic harassment when I'm sleep deprived also. And, you know, um, make me feel like I'm going to die. Um... You know, so my sleep has been mildly improving. <clears throat> you know, yesterday I went and I said I haven't really had fish all week. So I didn't, I don't I didn't want any shrimp or anything. I want some, I wanted, my body was craving some, for some fish fish and not tuna. So, um, if you go someplace and get fish at a restaurant or something, it's usually fried. And, um, I don't want fried fish. So I went to the... Zoe's place by the mall, and I had the, um, I had to pay a little extra, but yesterday, let's see, yeah, I had to pay a little extra, but I had the quinoa, um, and I also had roasted vegetables and salmon kebab with, um, zucchini and stuff. And so then I showed y'all my $5 plate for dinner, you know, um, so I think, you know, more like what I ate for lunch kind of helped a little bit, but as I said, my sleep was still spotty and not straight on, you know, so... I think it was last week, or was it the week before? No, it was last week I got kicked out of that room by those random people. They look, I can tell they look like they're associated with the Order of the Eastern Star. This, and I mean, after me trying to help another pregnant woman, I'm not pregnant, but me trying to help the, the pregnant lady, and then next thing you know, I guess as of the way to mock, there's this baby shower, and then I, like at the mall, uh, not yesterday, but I think it was the day before, and I saw pregnant women everywhere. <laughs> like, I'm like, is it National Pregnant Women's Day? Or, or they just must, you know, mock me. And they don't want me to help, um, excuse me, another pregnant targeted person. And then um, another targeted friend, I'm not sure if I mentioned about how she told me about the um, directed conversation about um, my books. And she said, oh, yeah, they must really be mad at you, Candy. Because she said that they did direct the conversation on her and said, well, why get the, why pay for the books when you can get them for free? You know, that they walked right by her. So that might be why people want to listen in on your phone conversation so, you, so they can do direct the conversation months later or later on. I see you, perp. Come on down with your no-driving ass. Pensacola people can't drive. Yeah, you think you think you can intimidate people with that big red truck. So, um um I started a couple of days ago working on my book about homeless and I mean my personal homeless experience. And it seemed like, you know, me talking about this topic 
it I'm going to bring up the gang stalking in my foster care situation, foster care abuse and gang stalking, you know. It's related to my homeless experience. I can't talk about my personal homeless experience without adding in the gang stalking too and the foster care abuse experience. But let me tell y'all something. Um, when I, <clears throat> a couple of days before I left for New York and ended up homeless, <clears throat> in 2006, excuse me, after Hurricane Katrina, and that foster boy James put his hands on me and punched me to the ground, um, well, the police had told me to have a place to live is a privilege and not a right. And then several months later when I was in New York, an ambulance paramedic guy told me the same thing. To have a place to, like how the hell two people in two different cities and states gonna tell you that? To have a place to live is a privilege and not a right. While they're sitting there, you know, driving nice shit and probably living in mansions and living just about like a celebrity, but telling me to have a place to live is a privilege and not a right. And then when I mentioned that on Yahoo Answers during the time when people were still halfway nice to me, um, people said, um, you, you know, one person said, well, yeah, how about you, sh you should have told him how about to have that have that badge is a privilege and not a right. So I'm like, you know what? You're right, you know, because having a, a police badge is more of a privilege than the basic roof over your head. Um, but that goes to show you that um, that the how the police look at us as subhuman. But for them to have a place to, I mean, now the police, if, if, if somebody took away their career and their home and, and, their, and their cars and everything, that police officer, the same police officer and that same paramedic guy who told me that, the black paramedic guy, I don't even know, he could have been Puerto Rican, Afro Puerto Rican or Dominican or something, but he was like black and delusionally believe he's white in New York, but the white police officer in, um, Gretna, Louisiana, the fake Gretna police. Gretna, Louisiana, Gretna police is Masonic. Fuck y'all. Bully fag cops, fake ass Gretna police. I hate y'all forever. Um, so the Gretna police is Masonic. So I bet you that officer would commit suicide and one of the, that police officer would go hang himself and that paramedic guy would probably go jump off of, um, the Brooklyn Bridge or something, if, if, if all their sh possessions and all their shit was taken from them, you know. So I'm planning today on writing on my homeless experiences, listening to music, listening to my Christian songs, and reading the Bible and trying to make a moment, an opportunity to pray. You know, times are getting scarier trying to wrestle to climb up to get trying to get closer to God and it's harder being on the streets and distracted you, you know to have that time for yourself in that place to just be by yourself and just focus and focus on God um you know if you know what I mean you know so I wasn't even going to do a video this morning, but I'll try to find some place where I can upload this on Wi-Fi. And I'm sorry for my digging in my ears and my crusty face. My ears itching and my face is crusty. No place to take a bath. This is not me. This is not me. To have no place to take a bath or a shower. Thanks, fake COVID-19. You know, you make everybody's lives worse. So... It's supposed to be another warm and nice day today. Um, and I still can't go to the doggone beach. And yes, the military bus ran last night, so I'm happy. You know, so I was able to get a free bus ride home. And so, a, a lady gave me $20 yesterday at the mall, just randomly. So thank you, you know, again, lady. Uh, that, that hasn't happened in months. 
So, um, you know, I'm going to go now. My, my video is warning me. I love y'all and bye.